so what I've done with these video lessons is these lessons are basically structured off of my notes. So if you haven't found them yet, in Schoology, I have a PDF file for the Roman Empire. I took all the textbook material, all the paragraphs and pages from the book, and I broke it down into a simple outline that you could follow. So it's important as you watch these videos that you follow along in the notes in the PDF and use those notes to study for your test. Why waste your time reading pages from the book in terms of studying when you could just look through the notes? All the answers for the tests are in the notes. Hello class, today we are going to learn about the Roman Empire. And Rome should sound familiar to you because you should have covered it last year. That's how you should have finished sixth grade. When I say Rome, what do you think of? Some of you might say, I think of the gladiators fighting to the death in the Colosseum. Or I think of the chariot races in the Roman circuits. I think of aqueducts. I think of Caesar salad dressing. Hopefully not the Caesar salad dressing because that wasn't invented in probably till the early 20th century. Forget about Caesar salad dressing for now. You probably don't remember a lot about the Roman Republic because you're 12 year olds. How much do 12 year olds retain in school? Not a lot. I'm kidding, but I'm actually not. Um, so I'm gonna go over the Roman Republic really quick. You probably remember the story of Romulus and Remus, two brothers that decided to create a kingdom right on the Tiber River and they fought over possession of Palatine Hill. And who won? Romulus or Remus? It wasn't Remus, otherwise it would be called the Reman Empire. So after Romulus became the first king of Rome, for the next roughly 150 years, Rome was a kingdom and went through a series of seven kingdoms. Rome's last king was named Tarquin the Proud. Proud because he was pompous and full of himself. When you have a king, you typically have a despot. If you put all the power in the hands of one person, what typically happens in the case of, say, Anakin Skywalker, aka Darth Vader and Emperor Palpatine? Well, you have a despotic ruler who places totalitarian rule, oppressive rule, and abuses the people. People got sick of Tarquin, overthrew him, and decided Rome should not have a king anymore. They decided to model their government off of the Greeks who had a Senate. So Rome created a Senate. And what is a Senate? It's basically elected representatives that are supposed to, and I stress supposed to, represent the people who elected them. Typically, the senators were very wealthy patricians, and you should know the terms plebeians and patricians, right? Patricians were the wealthiest class, only they can be the senators. So Rome was now ruled by a senate, and when a country is ruled by a senate, it's typically called a republic. Now we have the Roman Republic, and Rome would remain a republic for the next 500 years. So in the Roman Republic, the senate had two leaders that the elected body would vote for to lead the senate for a one-year period. And these two leaders were called consuls. One consul, his focus was to govern Rome. The other consul, his focus was war, to lead the generals into battle. So in the mid first century BC, the Senate had two consuls. One's name was Pompey and the other one was Julius Caesar. Julius Caesar and Pompey were like really good friends. So good in fact uh, that Pompey married Julius Caesar's daughter. Julius Caesar was the consul in charge of the army and as such he conquered Gaul, which is now France, and invaded Britain. He, he was so successful in his battles, once he returned to Italy, the Senate was so scared by Julius Caesar's power in charge of the army and all the new lands he's conquered, they tell Julius Caesar to step down from command. Julius thinks, oh my god, if I do that, they're just going to imprison me and then I'm done for. So Julius Caesar, with the support of his army, marches on Rome. Marches his troops into the Senate and basically says, I'm in charge of the show. He ultimately goes to war against Pompey. Pompey winds up beheaded in Egypt. Julius Caesar is now the sole ruler of all of Rome. Julius Caesar then declared himself the dictator of Rome. What does dictate mean? Dictate means to speak. He pointed out to the Senate, you are supposed to speak for the people that elected you, but you're not doing so. So I will speak for the people. 
Because Julius Caesar had total rule and the Senate feared him, they ultimately stabbed him to death on the Senate floor. So with Julius Caesar now lying dead on the Senate floor, Rome fell into a civil war, a power struggle between two people. Julius Caesar's top general, his name was Mark Antony, he took the Roman army, who was very loyal to him, and he waged war against Rome itself, against the Senate, who didn't like Mark Antony too much. The Senate wanted Julius Caesar's son and adopted nephew, Augustus, to run the Republic. So the Senate commissioned Augustus to have a Roman army. So we had Mark Antony's Roman army against Augustus's Roman army, and when we have a country at war against itself, Roman against Roman. What do we call it? A civil war. But to Mark Antony's benefit, he had the support of the Egyptian army because Mark Antony was having a, uh, let's say, an affair with the pharaoh of Egypt, Cleopatra, who donated her forces to him. Still, unfortunately, Mark Antony lost and ended up committing suicide with Cleopatra. So Augustus marched his army into Egypt, found Cleopatra and Mark Antony lying together dead, and then seized Egypt as part of, the, part of the Roman Republic. Now, as sole ruler of Rome, Augustus declared himself, like his uncle, dictator. You know what dictator means now, right? To speak for, to speak for the people. Declared himself dictator and declared himself an emperor. So Rome goes from being a republic to an empire, with one totalitarian, total ruler over everything. But to do that, you see, in a republic, the Senate governs. But if you're an emperor, you can't have the Senate govern, you have to govern. So he basically stripped the power from the Senate. And the Senate couldn't do anything because, unlike Julius Caesar, Augustus committed a purge. He basically had everyone who disagreed with him killed. So now he had a Senate body that had to agree with whatever he said. So even though the Senate continues to exist through the years of the Roman Empire, it didn't have the power it once did. Okay, we're looking at the notes now in the PDF. So we're going over Augustus's accomplishments. As the first emperor of Rome, the first emperor of Rome could be on the test. Augustus declared himself dictator, he stripped the power from the Senate, and then he went on to expand the borders of the empire. He completed his conquest of Hispania, Spain, Germania, Germany. He completed the conquest of Britain under Emperor Augustus. Rome enters a period called the Pax Romana, which means Pax, means peace in Latin, the language of the Romans, Romana, Roman, so it translates to peace Roman, but that doesn't make sense in English, so we flip it, Roman peace, Pax Romana, which will last 200 years. And a lot of the great things happen under the Pax Romana. Roads and trade expand. The trade in the empire stretches all the way from Europe to India to China, along the Silk Road, just bringing in lots of wealth into the empire. The empire, it, it just vast, it stretches all the way from North Africa to the shores of Britain. Other achievements, the Romans are using domes, they're using arches, they're building aqueducts, they come up with the concept of concrete, they're building coliseums. Hmm, all those things are kind of important today, right? Coliseums for our sporting events, concrete on our sidewalks and our streets, aqueducts, bringing water to our crops, right? Domes and arches and our architecture. I mean, where would we be without the Roman Empire? Classical texts that come out of this time period are very important as well. When I'm talking about classical texts, I'm saying, well, classical means old texts, right? Texts means words, old words. So when we talk about classical texts in this class, we're talking about the writings of the ancient Greeks and the ancient Romans. So some of the ancient Romans whose writings are very important are Cicero, who was a political thinker that wrote a lot about government, and a lot of the things he he devised and came up with are still applied by our politicians today. We have famous writers like Virgil. We have scientists like Ptolemy, who not only said the Earth was round, but was saying that the sun, the Earth, the planets, he believed there was a rotation. However, he thought that the planets and the sun rotated around the Earth, 
rather than 1500 years later where um, Copernicus discovers. It's the other way around, the Earth revolves around the Sun. So this pretty much concludes our first video lesson about the Roman Empire at its height. Stay tuned for next time as we go over the rise of a new religion called Christianity. Until then.